for this one, and then I'm going to share the screen. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and look at that. I think pretty much in. Uh, oh, okay. Close the counter. This one, uh, homework two, I think. Uh, but I did was uh, I did another thing that I added that uh, all the uh, I'm going to show you here that under data you can see all the data now whatever the data available on the, the that uh, excuse me the powerpoints as well as on our homework uh, midterm test final exam all homework all data I put it into here as well as that I attach to all that. Uh, all assignment as well so everywhere you cannot miss now see here if you go and click on this one you can get it here you can if you click on this one you can get it and even homework two again you can get that one even midterm home oh sorry no 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 not that one this one this one the one that we have that one you can see that it's been on my side i can show you that uh, two already been attached see everything attached okay so even those are even available here to uh, if you go to data if you go to sorry data under data even they, they were available pretty much all the data are available now. everything so here too so you're not going to miss anything. I have then uh, I added that all the that, uh, latest versions of our assignments as well that with all the descriptions and everything. Even for the, that uh, this midterm, if you go ahead and open midterm, even that midterm that uh, it's come along with uh, like uh, some description. This one, week two. Week two, I added this one too. With the description here. And we have homework with the description as well. Okay, with that said, uh, <clears throat> okay, let's go ahead and then, then I think pretty much that in homework two that uh, we covered pretty much uh, most of the parts, but I wanna have a look at it uh, from the beginning and go through real quick homework two. Uh, homework two, we can remember uh, that uh, generate a scatter plot matrix of the continuous variable. Then we did that. We did that one. See, okay, we got the data. We did that one last time. We did, we just changed this one. We formatted. Okay, if anything is missing, it's everything's over here. And the question one: generate a scatter plot matrix for the, all the continuous variable. Group the variables by gender. So that each paired observation has a gender associate label. See, we did that one format. See, group sec to the sex, and then sex has been that formatted by gender because that we gonna call it that now the sex gender. And then we look at the contents, and then if you want even look at that, uh, get the printout. Then we look at the correlation matrix. Then later on, say they generate two simple linear regression that predict WT18, WT18 uh with the something okay for the w218 the procedure see correlation then i got the correlation matrix for all the continuous variables so if i do this one real quick on this one we did this one that's okay we can run one more time get the results on that side the data already in see up to summer summer some of the types Okay, then we're gonna format this one to here. And we have a new, yeah, new variable called gender with all the labels rather than that have the, the six with the zero and one. See, now we have a label. And uh, then in order to generate the scatter plot, scatter plot matrix. Quick question on the correlation. Oh, yeah. that's, that's extra, right? Because the question asked for a scatter plot, that's just extra to augment the analysis. That's not required for the actual problem. Which one? The, the scatter plot? Uh, 
the correlation matrix. Correlation matrix, I'm going to get that one for a reason because they were asking us to that uh, regress WT18 with another one, another variable. How could we going to pick the, the other variable? Uh, I see what you're saying. I, I prefer that if you're going to go ahead and pick the variable with the highest correlation, it's not necessarily be the same thing, okay? But uh, if, if you can pick the highest correlation, hey, Angela, we just started, good evening, and then we're going to go through homework two and then uh, midterm test today, everything, and then finish, and you guys can go early too. I just started going through that uh, midterm, the, the homework two again, and then we were on the, that one. And uh, Thomas was asking whether why we're going to do this correlation coefficient, because there's a reason, because we're going to take the correlation, uh, the coefficients of the covariance matrix to in order to find that, that the, the regressor variable, which is going to be more uh, uh, suitable to regress this guy. But I pick the, let's go ahead and look at the, I pick this one thinking that it's going to be that more sense to have a, like a high 10 weight. But if you want, you can, we can put the, that exactly the one that we really need. Okay, so here we run this one. Okay, and we did that one already, but uh, let's go ahead and finish this one in an order. Do you see that one? It has been given with uh, male for the males and female for all the variables. <clears throat> all continuous variables. But I don't think this is a continuous variable. Is that a continuous? Some is a continuous variable too, I think. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So then we can get the contents and then correlation matrix. Let's look at the correlation matrix. Come on, all this. Correlation. See. You can remember we had that discussion because I really need the weight at the age of 18. I'm going to say at the age of 8, 18, sorry, this one, what would be the highest one that's going to be correlated with that one? That would be the that's it, circumference of the, le uh, the leg. See, LG18 would have the, that highest correlation. You can pick either LG18, but I put that W218 even that uh, close to that one, something with the highest correlation not the lower correlation, even the height at nine, 64, see? see, that one you can pick too, something with the 60s, 60 so. So if you feel like you're gonna pick the exact with the right one, that should be ST18, that should be ST18 here, see? It should be ST18, see? So I can turn the scatter plot with, between the, W218 with the, if you want, I can change this on ST18 and the height at age, not the height. So ST means strength. Strength at 18, ST. ST18 group by gender. So, we get the scatter part matrix. For that one, and then you see for the male and female weight versus ST18, and then um, we can fit the, that regression line for that one. For this one, should be ST, ST, ST18. This one plot with the fitted line with the age at 18 W2 versus the height, not the height. Strength. And if I can remember, ST stand for strength, I think. Yeah. ST strength in kilograms. Yeah. Uh, strength at age 18, see, which is ST. Who by gender? See, this one regression line WT 18. And if you, you can put ST 18. And then it has been formatted by C gender two. See, regression lines being added for the males and females. 
that's not what we ask us that's to like a simply that run the regression okay see run a regression for males and females so since that we decided to wt18 being regressed by strength Uh, ST18, <clears throat> this one is strength. Strength page 18. This one ST. ST18. See for the yeah. So the same thing we ran with a different way. Can you remember that Angela suggested that some different way of doing this one? See, I'm doing this one one at a time, but you don't have to. See, you get all the results. See, they are B0 and B1. Okay. And uh, this one, same thing, Berkeley and the next day. ST18 for females. ST height that height of the height. That instead of that one both can be run at the one same same time there are results over here too and they both can be see both models can be done by the following code see this one st okay then by sex and then it has been says formatted by gender as you see the confidence level for the B as well, see, the rate. Yeah, you can see this one, you can write the equation. You know how to write the equation. Y hat equals, Y hat means like a, the weight, weight at the age of 18, estimate equals this one, see, for males and females, you can write like that. See both over here so we can discuss that one writing equations and everything you know how to write the equation for this one this for that one equation if you write the equation for those two this we can write uh, this is for the this is for see this is for males see? for the males we can write You can say, say that uh, you can say that the weight 18 hat equals okay, like that. Uh, for see, 40.79 plus 0.14. I'm gonna round that to four decimal, two decimal places. Sorry. ST18, see, this is for males, see, and for females, if you write WT18 hat, you go to that one, see, see 48.56 plus 0.48. Oh, eight, I'm going to convert that to oh, 09 actually times ST18. Like this one, five, six, six. For male and female. You can write the equations like that. Yeah, equations like that. The model. If you want to put the model, you're going to take this out and put the error term, you know, if you want to put the model. See, this is the, this is the way how you're going to predict about that if somebody going to be added to this one. With the while we are doing this experiment, if somebody with the uh, who, who say uh, somebody gonna add to this one at the age of that 18, if you have they have measured their strength with the with the, uh, with this given value, you can easily predict that how much their weight weight would be for the at the age of 18. That kind of a prediction you can do. It's like a some kind of a trial and error method. Sometimes. It, because when it comes to the whole total big population, this is going to work very well, fitting very well. Because that for a sometime individual, it's not going to work. But individual individualism is not a part of statistics or data analytics. We're going to take into account pretty much everything at the end of the day. 
So that's that. Let's go to the number, the second part. Then later on, they say that uh, generate multiple linear regression with W218 instead of putting just uh, uh, whatever we put over here, that uh, ST18. They were suggesting HT2, HT9, WT2, WT9. So those things with the multiple regression run and then uh, describe about that one. Oh. Oh, what is that? Okay, model WT18. Why is that? Data out Berkeley WT18 HT2 HT9 WT2 WT9 ST9. Those are the ones that HT2 HT2 WT2 HT2. I think we have this. Okay, W2. Okay, we need the HT2, WT2, HT9, WT9, okay, and ST9. Yes. What I think. Yes. <clears throat> Well, individual one. See confidence interval. See, look at there. This is not a good model at all. See, look at this one. This is this suggests thirty six percent being explained. See, so much error being carried over here. Fifteen thousand three hundred eighty two error unexplained error being carried. Only five thousand being explained. See the leftover nine thousand around nine thousand of that error not being explained. That's not a good model at all. For the sake of just doing this one for, the, for your practice, they were talking about that one. But the broader discussion we're going to have later on and they pick what's the best model, those kind of things. See, this one. Then uh, we can say that later on, say, find the R squared, the overall ANOVA table, and the overall F test. Overall F test, you know what do you mean by overall F test? We had a discussion on that one. Overall F test. See, overall F test. See? Overall F test. Overall F test. Uh, that means H naught. We're gonna say beta one equals to beta two equals to beta three equals to beta four. Or you can say you can say this way. Beta beta relates to what height H T two equals to beta. Beta relates to W, uh, WT2, okay, and uh, beta, this one, beta relates to HT9, beta relates to WT9, beta relates to ST9. If you want, you can write like that. Equals to zero, equals to zero, five of them, versus HA, at least one of them not equal to zero. That's the F test, overall F test. Okay. So for this one, let me see that one. Okay. So this one too, but this has been done for the earlier we had this one for different question. Okay. Sometimes. See, when you're gonna write the, the explanation, you can talk about that, how they look like, everything see, as a rough inference, the plot can show something pattern from left to right, get a positive relationship between the weight and the height of meals and see, something. It's not the same case, we have the different variable WT18 and we have ST18, okay? But uh, you can, talk about that one based on what you have here, pretty much the same way. As the height increases, the weight also increases. See, you can, whatever you see on this uh, graph, the pattern, how it looks like, the, the higher the value of HT2, the higher the value of W2, for both of males and females, anything. However, it should be noted that the increase in height does not cause the increase in weight. Just scatter plot only, see, that's, that's a very good point, see. Should be noted that the increase in height does not cause the increase in weight. See? Even though that you see this one, the you're gonna just simply find the, in this relationship only. 
but the it's not a cause the causation or the what what would cause them to have a, like a more weight we don't talk about that one that's not up to us because that's not the data analyst of job we can simply say there's a relationship only when you the higher the the, the, the taller the person see that other person, you know, cannot be that make the include the conclusion at the end of the day. No, you have to make sure that very clearly you say that increase in height does not cause. There might be other reason that gonna uh, affect to the that increasing weight. The scatter part only resemble possible association or relationship only. It does not resemble causation. See? Very important that part. That's what we are doing in the whole regression too. Just trying to build up a, some kind of a relationship and see how strong that relationship through the correlation coefficient or the, the R squared, or that take the R squared, so that square root of that one. And then that would be the, that uh, in the, the, that would be the, the, the correlation between that variable. As the height increase, this one. Then, in addition, some data show some extreme values, such as one male, for example, had the height of over 95 unit weight, just around 14. This indicates randomness of people's genetic makeup for the data entry is wrong. This kind of inference show the behavior of the data in general. So, whatever you see, whatever you're going to see, uh, see here, just around 14. Yes, yeah, so very tall, but the, his, the weight is around this one with this extreme value for the male. This is so does it the female to whatever if you see something. Pretty much other other all others are scattered, see, somewhere over here, around the center of the data. Center of the data. Okay. Those things you can explain. And uh, here when it comes to the so based on not the WT2, okay, you put the W2 18 and whatever the variables that you have taken over there, okay, W2 18 versus the other one, you can simply take the one with the highest correlation, which I pick the ST, ST18, or you can pick the another one, which with the next highly correlated one. Yeah. 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 You can describe that one. The individually, how they their contribution and everything. Yeah. Step procedure linear regression may using weight and enter this one, dependent variable for the male category. They must consider the single linear regression model. There are how many observations? See, and talk about the F statistics, R squared, see. and based on the, the T value, you can talk about all this. And the same thing for here for the female, see, multiple regression here. And then again, that uh, you can talk about that one, see. But by looking at this one, see, we got to the results of right procedure for this multiple linear regression model using weight at this one as a dependent variable. 136 observations are read from the data set, and all observations are used in the analysis. See, all being used. See, this many, these are the number of observations. This, everything has been used. You can indicate that and whatever you see on this table. The ANOVA table contains the F ratio mean, see, or of mean square for overall model, which in case the highly significant S value, see 14.64 or P value, go to P value. P value is extremely small. That means you reject H naught. H naught means this guy you reject. See? That means at least one of them are not equal to zero. At least one of the regressor variable is explaining the variation in WT height. At least one of the variable is. Uh, related to see highly significant portion of the variation of the data see? the model explain a highly significant portion of the variation the r square indicate that the height variable accounts for only this much of the variation in weight how this thing is see? that the height variable accounts Go to that one R square. Square point this indicates. You can write parameter estimate of there are those things that if they're gonna ask for the homework too, they later on they ask that okay. Uh, 
explain that one, then talk about the compare the t-statistic to test each of the coefficient against to be zero, state the conclusion. That means the individual test, individual test also you can do, see? individual testing, look at this. Individual test, overall test, and we discuss about the partial test, okay? That means this discussion, you can build it up, see? So this one, first one you can do, see, individual test. See, that's what we were expecting. Individual test means individually you're going to test. The data, okay, I'm going to write one only for you to see HT2 equals zero versus uh, HA data uh, HT2 not equal zero. See, in a similar fashion, you do for all of them individually. The second one, overall, overall if test individual t test this one individual t test overall f test see the same thing that i wrote uh, see uh, data okay i'm gonna write data ht2 equals data wt2 equals dot 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 and the last one data st9 equals zero versus ha at least one of them, one of them not equal zero, okay? Not equal zero. Then you take the F, P value, P value from the, I know what is it? And then you can make the conclusion, I know what is it? So here you're gonna take the P values from, P values from there, P values from this table. This table, parameter estimate table, parameter estimate table, see, parameter estimate table, those p values, see, p values from the parameter estimate table. This is from p value from the ANOVA table, overall test. Then, in addition to that, and yesterday we were talking about the partial test, partial if test, see, partial if test. How could we gonna do that one? You can remember. Instead of checking that one, you can think about that it's not included in this uh, homework. Let's say that I'm interested in where the last two, last two means where the B data WT9 and uh, S data ST9 make any significant uh, contribution to this one at the same time versus HA at least one of them not equal to zero. How do you build up? That result we don't have here. We write the equation for such a uh, test. Can you remember for such a test, you need the F sum of scared error for the reduced model. You run that one minus sum of scared error for the full model, okay, divided by K minus L over, K minus L over. K minus L over summer scared error of the full module divided by uh, N minus P. You can remember this one, that's F. Where see, n means the sample size, p means the number of parameters in the full model, full model, and k number of regressor variable in the full model variables. In the full model, okay, and L number of regressor variable in the re reduced model, in the reduced model, reduced model, like that. See, now this is the full model. Y equals 
data sorry data not or b not doesn't matter data not data one uh, uh, full model means like a, everything okay data data one means data ht2 ht2 times ht2 plus data i'm gonna write the next one wt2 times wt2 plus dot 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 the last one i'm gonna write data uh st strength at the age of nine times strength at the age of nine see that one plus e that's the full this is the full model you can run this model full model and the reduced model is what reduced model you have taken now two of them two of them taken out see these two taken out see when you take that out from that one whatever left over yeah see whatever left over you're going to write here okay the, what is the left over left over would be that uh, you have a i'm going to call that on data one data two for my convenience okay data one for ht2 okay data one for ht2 so ht2 we keep like this wt9 the last two last two we don't have so i'm going to have like this ht2 times ht2 height plus dot 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 this time the last two has been taken now so i'm gonna have beta wt ht9 times ht9 ht9 see that's the reduced model so you're gonna run that one those two models and get the sum of squared errors and then calculate and plug in into the formula we did that one yesterday we showed you the example how we so there are three more three three uh, test individual t test and even for this one later on with the aid of the f we fit in into what we got that one and fit in into see we're gonna get that f value and then fit in into some kind of variable called the, this one is k minus l comma n minus p at uh, degrees of freedom you can remember and then we're gonna have that f naught with the aid of the F naught, you get this area to the right of that one that's called a P value. By looking at the P value, you decide whether, see, this one I'm gonna call F naught, okay? If not, call the absurd F value. That's the F value I'm gonna get there. Locate in this F distribution and see, we use that all the codes and everything. If you just go ahead and looking into that, uh, the, we recorded that one, you can, just watch the video and then have a look at it. See, then with the aid of that p value, you can make the conclusion for that kind of a partial test. The partial test of information we have, you're gonna run that uh, that this regression two times that full model like this one. See, like this. See, whatever the, that all the variables, whatever that variables that we included one, two, three, four, five. And later on that uh, you can take out uh, two variables and then run that one and get the SSC. See? So the full model and see that one is to generate this one for the linear model, this one, if you for your convenience that if I say that if I'm gonna plan to that uh, test that uh, WT9 WT9 and ST9, whether they're going to be zero or not, I'm going to paste here. So for that one, I'm going to take this out. <laughs> take that out. So that means multiple linear regression. Then here you can see the multiple linear regression model within parentheses. You can see full, full model. See, that's a full model predicting blah, blah, blah. This one model, you can see reduced model, reduced model predicting weight at this one. Now the strength, weight at the age nine, weight at age nine has been taken out. And the strength at age nine 
taken out just for the reduced mode. Edit. This one you can see. Okay. Here, if you want that one, you don't have to do for the test, but uh, that's all. So, generate multiple linear regression model, generate multiple linear regression model reduced. This one, then, I'm adding model pool. That's when you're making this, this variable using the variable only those three. And then height at the map. Okay. So, if you run this one, you can get the easily both if you run. So, this is for the uh, full model, this is for the reduced model. So, I'm talking about this one. See? Some of the errors for the reduced model 11,127. This one 9,840. Forget about the decimals. See, so you're gonna go ahead and then plug in into this one uh, that formula. See, you can remember. Oh. So this one. And this formula, if you plug it into this formula, see? So I'm going to plug it into that formula, sum of scared error of the reduced model. Sum of scared of reduced model is how much? 11,000. 11,127 minus. And the full model, go to without decimal, let's write without decimal, 9840, 9840, see? Divided by K. K means number of regressive variable in the full model, which is five and the number of regressive variable in the reduced model three you saw that one already see number of regressive variable in this one one two three four five here one two three so that's the difference k and l k for the full model this one for l for the this one and full model again the this one is 980 40 see divided by the number of observation 136 minus number of parameters in the, the full model, which is six, including data not. See, so when you plug in into this one, see, you get the F naught. With the F naught, how do you calculate T? Can you remember? We were calculating T on this one. Uh, We calculate t like this way. So for this one, see? get that t value. If not, put here number of degrees of freedom on the top. Numerator number of degrees of freedom is two. The denominator degrees of freedom is how much? See, uh, 136 minus 30, which is the see these two, these two like uh, five minus three, two. So this one is uh, 130, see, like that. And then the other value we had to calculate and get it, okay? This one, I'm going to keep what we had earlier, like that. So we know how to calculate that one. And we get the p-value and make the conclusion and whether see that these two are important in explaining. That means these two. Weight, edge of nine and strength, both together, explaining very the, the important in explaining the variation in the weight at the age eighteen. Okay, so those things we can do three tests we can do. Okay, but we don't ask that one in the test. Okay, so let's go to the question number two. Question number two, we were talking about we get the, the data set with the UN. Uh, see, they were doing the data set uh, file homework too, but uh, if it's for the contains PPG, DP, and then especially that you, I had to show you something here, that data set, they have already done the logarithm has been taken, okay? You don't have to take the log. 
they have given the name for the love with fertility the, the gdp national income per per, per person okay your gross domestic product per person log fertility and log pp gdp they all been already done and they have given a name see it's name for given so you can use that one as it is see you don't have to take the log okay so they say they generate two scatter plot for the pp gdp versus fertility one linear but the other one is scaling so i'm going to say generate a scatter plot of pp gdp versus fertility The other one generates scatter plot of log PP GDP versus log fertility. Both. So you, I have scat two scatter plots. So I can. That one says log log one, log log one being spread out. The other one without log, see, without taking log transformation. Look at what happened. See, they were see just clustered around the origin. You cannot make any any. You can think of any kind of model when we have a data like this. See, they've been spread out along the x-axis and along y-axis. You have to get everything to spread out into the that uh, inside the framework, spread to this way. In that way, we're going to expand this way and expand that way. Okay, both ways. I did like that. See? So there's those are the scatter plot. This is those scatter plot. Perform the regression using both log and linear transformation. Notice that I have provided log transform data for PP, GDP, and fertility which are respectively log PP, GDP, that's the same thing we were talking about. X, uh, then which regression X will be better. In addition to that, now what I did was yesterday we had this discussion. I was trying to do this one in all the four possible outcomes, four possible options. Uh, PP, GDP, fertility, no logs on any of these, or X or Y. Log on both, log on both. See, logarithm scale on both. Here, linear scale on both variables. Logarithm scale on both variables. And the third one, logarithm scale on PP, GDP only, linear scale on fertility. Fertility being keep as it is, and I'm going to take the log on the other. And the other way around. And the logarithmic scale on fertility and linear scale on PP, GDP. So we try all the four, and then even this one, if you run this one, and have a look at it and see how they've been spread out. See, look at just know any big difference. And this one for all the four options. Okay. I was taking into account four options to come up with the best result. See, sometimes, see, see, this one, this see, log on this one, see, it's kind of like, okay, but let's see. Let's do the same thing for the regression. This is uh, the number three. Number three, say, sorry, number two, say that now perform the regression. Number two, number question number two. Question two. It's not two, two. Two, one, scatter plot. Two, two, regression. Okay, that's right. Regression for the number two. Okay. Number two, I'm going to do the regression on PP, GDP versus fertility. Log to log. Log to no log. No log, no log to log. See? All the four options. And let's run all the four together. The regression, all four options. We don't ask us to do like that, but get a, like a very clear picture. It's okay to run all these four. Let's go to this one, see? Uh, linear scale on both variables, okay? Linear, okay? Linear scale on both. PPG to this one. See, look at R squared. 0.21. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to logarithmic on both, log to log. Look at the R squared, 45%. Let's go to 
it has drastically gone up when you take block transformation. See, that's a good sign that uh, our transformations are playing a heavy role. Okay, so we'll now see that what's going to happen if this transformation has been done on each one of these variables. Okay, that's 45 around 45. Now let's go to the next one. Scale on TPGDP linear, scale on further. See, logarithm scale on TPGDP log over here. See, this one log. Why is log? Look at that square. 49, 49. If you take the log on that one, you saw that scatter plot. See, look at the scatter plot. Very nicely spread out, but it's a negative value. It's see, negatively correlated, but the higher the value of log fertility. Okay, it's oh not sorry, it's not that one. I'm just talking about uh, this one. The other one, okay, too, but the log to log at least 45. See, not bad. Log to log. 45 and the log fertility, sorry, log uh, the national income to this one, the other one, see, log to that other one, linear fertility is 49. See, that's their graph. Graph comes to the under, okay? Then starting from here. Then other way around. Now look at, again, go back to that one. If you take the log on X, doesn't play any that much of big role. Better off to take the log on y. <laughs> Look at this one. See? If you take the log on this one, it will be nicely spread out. And log on this one too, nicely spread out. You saw if you take the log on this one, no, it's gonna came as it can pretty much come back to the same as the non-linear the linear model. No good. So out of these four. These two, the ones are in the middle, the log to log, log to log, and the log, y log to x, no log, these two. Have a like higher uh, uh, correlation coefficient. Sorry, that is uh, the core, not the correlation coefficient, the, it's a correlation coefficient in a way that uh, this one, coefficient of determination r square. Let's see, even out of these two, this one is far better. If one is with only y, this one. But sometimes that r squared is not enough for us to make the conclusion at the end of the day. This is not the end of the, our discussion, okay? We keep adding some kind of the indicators for, uh, to make the, 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 pick the best variable, best model at the end of the day. But uh, for time being, we are utilizing the r squared to compare and contrast. Okay? That's what we did in the homework number. Two, and then you can build up the discussion. I added these two too, okay? You can add two and, and do like a broader discussion on that one by looking at the R square, compare one or these, okay? Okay, so I think that it's pretty much, that's all on that one. And let's move on to that uh, midterm. On the midterm again that I added that uh, the, the, the version with the, that uh, all the description, that one has been even added, okay. This one already uploaded into that right space, you can see. See, the data set has a part data set which contains information about the patient in the Framingham heart study. The, this one, this feminine house study is a long-term ongoing cardiovascular cohort study of a residence of city of Framingham, Massachusetts. The study began in this one, 1948, with the, this many subjects. And it's now it's, it's in the, their third generation. So, see, prior to the study, almost nothing was known about the epidemiology of a hypertensive or see, RTO, or cellular, cellular, cellular cardiovascular disease. Much of the now common knowledge concerning the heart disease, such as the effects of the diet, exercise, and common medications such as aspirin, based on this longitudinal study. This is a project of the National Heart Lung Network Institute, the third largest institute of the National Institute of the Health. This is a federal, that uh, very research-oriented institute, NIH. People get the grants from NIH in large scale in collaboration with this one and with the Boston University. They have that this uh, sub uh, division within that one national institute. 
So in that particular data set, you can see the hard data set. See, that's the hard data set. Hard data set has a status, whether the person is by this time, even this one, that, that the it course, see, see, age, uh, the gender, age at start, height, weight, diastolic, systolic, MRW, MRW is the one that we were describing over here. They say that pretty much that one, they, they were telling him the meaning of the most of the variables evident from the variables name. An exception is the MRW variable, which, which contains a patient's metropolitan relative weight. The MRW is a percentage of the patient weight to an ideal weight. The same MRW score of 100 means ideal weight, whereas the score of 150 means 50% 50 of heavier than ideal. The MRS is similar to the more family body mass index. It's pretty much like ID, body mass BMI. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so in this data, uh, hard data. This is still like MRW. Now you know smoking, how many packs of cigarettes have been age at the date, and the cholesterol level, cholesterol status, see, BP, blood pressure status, weight status, smoking status, and this one, H, age, height, uh, CHD, cardio, uh, asteroid, I think, CH. Stand for CHT. Stand for CH. At the age that this has been that the, the, the he has been diagnosed with this particular disease. Okay, so that's what they said. Age diagnosed age. Okay, that age. So you can see very clear cut here, there's a serious issue. Some data are missing, some data missing. They're missing, but they're alive. Alive but missing. That's the serious issue with the data. Missing data, those are called the sensor data. Data being sensor, not truncated. Truncation is a different thing. This thing sensor in this particular data experiment, some data missing, age at death, why we don't know this one, see? This data, he's still alive. See, age at death. So they were missing. That means we don't know, see? It seems they were alive. We don't know that uh, which age are they gonna die of, see? So they were missing. In addition to that one, this part, see? He are missing too. This one makes some sense at, at a certain point, but see? But since they were alive, that means our experiment is, let's say our experiment is done. This experiment is not done yet. It's keep going. It's keep going since 1948. It's keep going. This ongoing research for the project. Okay, it has been going for even for the third roll, roll out to that, even to that the third generation, but uh, still keep going. Let's say that we have stopped that one. If the very moment if you stop, and the person not gonna that uh, need the experience. Experience means that if you're not gonna experience so that event, event means that if this person not gonna die or that he not gonna drop off from this particular that uh, research, this data, we don't know what day that this person gonna uh, need the, the, the experience, the event, event is near in this case, the death, okay? So because of that, we're gonna call those kind of a data, sensor data, since it has happened to the right, we call the right sensor data. And on the other hand, if this particular experiment has been done within a certain period of time, we're gonna say that uh, type one error, a uh, type one sensor data. We're gonna say that uh, if, uh, if this particular experiment has been done until certain number of subjects experience the event, until that certain number of subjects experience even when then we're going to call that one type two sensor data and it has been done to the right side because of that we're going to call that one right sensor data but in this case that makes sense because they were alive but even that one what i'm trying to say that if by any chance this is not this experiment let's say another kind of experiment if that been stopped over here see during this thing this other experiment they started this 
particular subject entered into the see this is the beginning this onset see the beginning this is the end of the experiment end of experiment okay let's say based on what end of experiment based on based on time or based on on number of subjects experience the event experience the event based on that one you decided certain number of that people going to that being treated or so to find some kind of a medication or even some kind of a situation so they were in this case that they were checking that this the heart disease okay but let's say we end that one based on after certain period of time some people have to end that one that particular experiment because we are running out of the funds the time so due to certain reason and we're going to relocate to another place or another region another country so many things based on so many things okay or sometimes that experiment being shut down and then uh, due to some legal uh, that uh, problem that uh, we had to move that one to another jurisdiction so anyhow but uh, i'm not going to go get into this kind of a, that in detail but anyhow what i'm trying to say that during this particular period of time some people might going to experience the event let's say that they experience the event some people drop out drop out drop out they say that i don't want to be part of this uh, experiment anymore but uh, after this one we don't know how long they're going to live that's why this period see lifetime after this one lifetime should be taken into account that if this has been done at this point and this person is if this person is over here it's done i'm sorry not this one this one you don't have that one okay for the first one you're not going to go beyond that one because that you already experienced the event you're not going to be a part of that person is experienced events done but some people they drop out but still they are alive some people relocate got another job and they say they're going to get out of that still see censored so these are censored data censored data so censored since this has happened to the right side are we going to say right sensor data right sensor data right sensor data now let's say that it has been done based on the time a certain period of time after one year two year three year this if that's the case we're going to say type 1 type 1 right sensor data if it is based on the number the number of that subject experience in the event it's a type 2 like that on the other hand we decided that for this particular experiment let's say that some people who are at the, uh, anybody over 18 years okay more than 18 years to be included in for this particular experiment then we going to say this side has been truncated not censored truncated truncated that one is left truncated left truncated data so overall at the end of the day in your hand you have left truncated type one right sensor data those are the data you have to tackle at the end of the day it's a very rigorous setting very rigorous setting it's not like a simply that you're going to fill in these places and do no because their resource very different when it's come to the biomedical research very heavy that's why you have to add more knowledge for your data analytics and data science and then expand the knowledge and see that not it's not like a raw data raw data not come in a very nice way very messy extremely messy See, it's been truncated because of that you decided that your data been truncated on left side and sometimes you say extremely older people not been included too then it's going to be that truncated on right side then you have a interval data, interval truncated data with the type 1 right sensor data or type 2 right sensor data and then the whole thing should be taken into account and then tackle that uh, is the aid of that uh, their theory or that uh, formula so uh, the explanation behind that one is important see but in this case see this case they were alive they were more like a sensor data okay but on the other hand look at that uh, some data uh, see smoking see you see or some data should be missing to some places let me see where they were missing i saw the some places I think this has been oh this problem this been imputed though it's so missing data. Okay, we can go to see 
Zeros. In the original data set, I don't think that we have a zero. We have a zero here, zero, zero, zero. Here is the missing data. Okay, missing data, we can check that one. What are we gonna do? Okay, let's go ahead and get this data. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get the data, hard data. Age missing. Okay. Age missing. I can see this one missing. What else missing? Okay. Age at death. Look at that. They were missing for sure. That uh, we don't know what else. Some places been missing too. Let's see what else that missing. Okay. We can figure out what are the missing variables and how many been missing. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the content. We look at the content a little bit. This is the, the content procedure and everything. Rate status, rate systematic status, mocking status, mocking. It's okay, numerical, 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 categorical, categorical, numerical, numerical, categorical, numerical, numerical, numerical. Okay. Let's say that, uh, let's count that missing values for the numeric variables, okay? Age at death, age at start, diastole, systole, height, weight, MRW, smoking, cholesterol, and weight too, no? The weight, yeah, we put the weight, systolic we put, uh, we put the smoking, did we put the smoking? Yes, we start from here, age at death, yes, age at start, yes, Age at CDG the diagnostic. This one, did we put that one? Age, age, CHT dial. At the age that you've been diagnosed. Uh, then cholesterol, yes. Then uh, death course, no. That's a categorical diastolic, yes, systolic, yes, height, weight, MRW, height, weight. Because they, they, they thought that this is like a, some kind of options. That's why it has been turned into blue, okay? And uh, smoking, yes, and systolic weight, and yes, pretty much everything being, yeah, over here. Let's say that procedure means, okay, go to this one, no labels, N, N missing, see? Number of missing. Then this one, number missing. Okay, this is the number, this many million missing. 3,280. This one, 152, 36, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 0, 0. No missing. There are six entries missing. Age at death. Many of these been missing. On the other hand, I want to see something here. Uh, okay. This one. How many data points in this one? Let me see. I see data set, I think 5,000. Oh. Yeah, 5,209. Huh? 5,209. Subjects being investigated. Okay. 5,209. What of 5,209? This many. We have this many we are missing. 5,200. They add to 5,000 that one. 5,209, 5,209, 5,200, 3 plus 6, 9, plus 9, 9. This to this one, 9. 5,209, 5,209. 5, 2, 
this one right here. See, those are the missing ones. Missing ones we can easily find. Once you find them, then how do you get the, 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 all the treatment for the missing data or imputation for missing data? Okay, I'm not going to do that imputation in large scale at this stage. Okay, we don't have a time because we are under this regression part. But at least we can treat them. Let's say that we, how could we going to tackle that one? I'm going to go ahead and get the data and see, get the data and set this one and then put it back into the same data set. I can use this one, this function, coalesce. As I'm gonna do one of these, see, and this way, okay, and I'm gonna impute means like whatever wherever the missing places being replaced by zero, replaced by zero, okay, replaced by zero. Anywhere that missing places, I'm gonna put zero. That's a one way to get this one. So if you go ahead and look at age at Age at death, see, now they've been replaced by zero, see. They were combined with zero, see, replaced with zero. So age at death, okay, that one. So if you wanna do the whole thing, then you can go and then use another kind of thing. I'm gonna that print, if you wanna, we can print two or that you can run and see this one, see, that's a busy function. Or you can use the student eyes, see. I'm gonna get this one and put it back into the, that uh, same data set, okay? You don't have to say that uh, since it's in working day, work uh, directory, it's gonna go, you don't need even this one. So it's gonna go to that one, see? Rip only missing one, just replaced by zero, see? Okay, let's see what happens. Everything wherever you see that all the variables being replaced, all the variables being replaced by zero wherever they were missing. See? Smoking missing zero zero so smoking we had the zero, age at death everything being see everywhere cholesterol see everywhere wherever the missing data being replaced by zero by through this one. If you need any particular variable to be taken care of. Then you can go to the same thing, get the data out, reportedly missing zero, and then run. I'm gonna just focus only on age at it. So already zero because, okay. That's why we have to change that one to different one, get the original one and then run and see, okay. But you, it's, it's not gonna show that very clearly. But anyhow, that, uh, that what I'm trying to say, they can be even that you can focus on this one and then change that one by two, if you want, one at a time. If you want to, instead of that one, if you want to change that by the mean, so the same thing for the whole thing, age at death, okay? Let's replace that one by the mean of the available data, okay? So all the missing places will be replaced by the mean of that one. Mean of the available data, age at death only. If you want the whole thing, you don't have to say particularly that to variable. Did we miss so anything? Age at death, let's see. No, it's not being replaced. Let, let me see what happened. Out. Uh, Back here, this one. So I'm going to run this one one more time. Not this one. Let's get the data, hard data. I'm gonna pull out from another place. Okay. I'm gonna pull out from here. So sorry. Uh, I can get uh, yet go to SAS help at library. Not. And that one is available to hard data. Sorry. Let's go to says web dot hard. And then we put it into hard. 
dot s a hot This is something that we had earlier. That's the problem. Not we don't have that. Not created. Okay, so now not created. Mm. Okay. Thank you. This one, sorry, this one. I'm talking about this one. So that's not the program you said. What was that? Okay, let's keep the same thing and then see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't. The data. Should change to uh, why it's not going to change this one? Let me see what happens. Let me okay, hard data is at this. Okay, this one. Okay, what I'm gonna do okay, see is at this. Okay, let's uh, let's go ahead over here. I'm gonna go ahead and open. Let's go wrong. And go to this one. Go to midterm and get the data from this one. We create a library. So you see, okay. I'm going to put a library over here, data out. This one, okay. This one to avoid this matter. Okay. 
data data out but what okay and I get it back data out out and see what's gonna happen We pick that particular variable and then we we'll see. Yeah, see, that place has been replaced by the the, the average of the existing data because the other one been mixed up because the D changes everything and then you're gonna come back with them they do the replacement but that's why I did this one refresh see if you want you can replace by the mean as well okay instead of zero that's what they are trying to say see. so if you're gonna do like that then make sure that uh, you can in any way you want that you can do that one okay so then later on let's go ahead and answer the question then you need the scatter plot once you clean up scatter plot matrix of the given sorry this one see first one generation of the scatter plot matrix of the given continuous variable i think height weight diastolic systolic mrw cholesterol is that all or we have more Uh, number of h at depth c these variables why those variables missing see scatter plot matrix height weight diastolic systolic mrw cholesterol age at depth age at this one weight smoking cholesterol Matrix. You can say scatter plot matrix of all continuous variables, all, all continuous or numerical variable, continuous variable.
Set up our matrix. Or oh, all oh, oh, the oh they have given no some of them being given in generate the scatter plot matrix of the following continuously following one okay i just added all but number one is for the just the following one i think i had the right one it's gonna go forever height weight diastolic systolic mrw and cholesterol only sorry i didn't see that one i had the right one Yeah, that's for the all of them, but we don't need for that one. No, that's for the all of them. See? For the given continuous variable, sorry, not the, all the continuous variables for the given continuous variable. See? So we need the height, we don't need the age, okay. We don't need the age at this one, we need the diastolic, systolic, diastolic, systolic, height, weight, MRW, no smoking, no smoking. Only one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, that is. If you want that uh, first that they do the imputation and clean them up and then uh, replace with uh, that average or whatever that all zeros doesn't matter with that one then after clean that one then you can do this uh, answer all the questions Yeah, see, it's, it's easy. Same like that. Uh, that one. Then, uh, then in a similar fashion that we had earlier, see, then we can do the then number two, use the t test to accept or reject the statement listed below. The state calculation and say there's no difference in cholesterol levels between males and females. See? You can go over there, then this one, go to male and female, see, takes in this one, see, class six, see, let's see this gonna work. See, male and female, sex in male and female, but we change that one, no? Let me see. Did we change this one here? No, here we didn't do any changes, I'm sorry. Yeah. We didn't do any changes. It's a male and female already in the data set. Okay, already in the data set, we have male and female. Sorry, that's for the homework. Okay, so male and female in the sex, they call that one sex. We didn't do changes, any changes. You don't have to and call the gender because it's already called the female and male because it's not zero and one. If it's zero and one, we're going to change that one to male and female for our convenience. And then you get the this. You know how to get this done by looking at the see, male, female, see, that are weight, see, go to the F test. See, first you check this one, okay, which pool one or set up weight is going to be utilized. In order to utilize this one, we don't know which one you're going to utilize to make the conclusion. This P value or this P value, which one we pick. 
in order to make this one before that one you check this one that means this means you reject h naught h naught means you have that equality they were not equal variances are not equal that means unequal then you pick this one to make the conclusion about the mean the mean the final conclusion is based on this one not the top one 0 0.0476 and then you say 0 0.046 means that it's less than no almost 0 0.05 okay almost 0 0.05 we reject but the 0.04 keep the 0.0476 can be compared with 0.0500 see so since it's smaller than the other one you can barely reject h naught that means that your mean for cholesterol for the males and females not the same it's almost the same see but not the same okay but you, how did you figure that out by looking at this value first you're going to check you're going to whether use the set up rate method or pool method or whether you're going to use the set up rate p value or pool p value how do you know that one? this p value has been being utilized in this case equality of variance one has been utilized and decide or oh, reject h h naught means not this h naught okay reject equality reject the equality of variances reject if you reject the equality means they were unequal that's how you go to the set up rate okay so in a similar fashion, you can go to the diastolic blood pressure, see? and there's no difference in diastolic blood pressure between the male and female. See? So that's one too. Then you can do part. See? See? Again, see, go and check that the equality of the variances points see extremely small. Then you reject the equality. That means you're going to use the set up that unequal one. That one, see, almost extremely zero. That means you're going to reject, you're going to reject H naught and say that uh, the diastolic blood pressure between males and females not the same. They're not the same. See, they're not the same. Okay, they're not the same. See, diastolic and these blood pressures are not the same. So you check this one first. Okay, that one. And in order to provide the estimate for the standard error, estimate and the standard error for mean cholesterol for the entire population, mean diastolic pressure for the entire population. See, mean cholesterol. So you're going to run the univariate cholesterol see, versus see, vari variables are what? Univariate variables are cholesterol for the entire population. The other one uh, for the diastolic. See, cholesterol and diastolic both can be tackled at the same same that per program see same codes so i'm going to run the univariate for both see univariate sorry yeah this is for the diastolic variable cholesterol and diastolic yeah yeah this is for Diastolic. This is for cholesterol. So you're gonna go to their mean. What we were looking for, mean cholesterol level. You're looking for the mean cholesterol for the entire population, which is this one for the cholesterol, and it's standard data. That's the standard data. You don't have to do any calculation like this. That's a standard data for me. And you do the same thing for diastolic. For the diastolic pressure is the mean. See, that's the mean diastolic pressure, mean standard error. That's it. Then the number four that say that they use a continuous independent variable that exhibit the best correlation with the dependent variable. You're going to get the bilinear regression model that predict cholesterol level has to be regressed with somebody who, is, who will show the highest correlation with that guy. In order to do this, that one, I was checking the my correlations. Either you run the print comp or correlation. Okay. Let's run this one. I gave the variable, see, all the variables, all the variables I take into account. Okay. Not the variable that were uh, in, mentioned in the, the, the scatter part, but this for the, this, uh, the correlation matrix, we're going to utilize all of them. And either way, 
either using Go or Princom. See, if you go ahead and look at that cholesterol, if we move this one to here, the cholesterol, the cholesterol being highly correlated with which one? Which one has the highest one? One but with itself, uh, 14, systolic. Next one, diastolic, see? First one is 14, 0.41, okay, 14 means like I'm talking about 14%, this one 12%. So the first one should be systolic, the next one should be diastolic. So you're gonna regress that's why I'm going to say that, that for the bivariate regression, cholesterol has been regressed with the first one systolic, the other one diastolic, because that's the highest correlation that we exhibit the So I use either core or this one, print com, then like we did in the homework one, see? So the only difference that we're gonna get the one that cholesterol being regressed with the uh, the variable that independent variable that shows that that exhibit the the best correlation with the dependent variable which is systolic. Then you run that. Okay. Then correlation you run the correlation and then you can talk about that one okay. based on that uh, that uh, see, R square. They were not good. In almost 3% being explained. Okay, let's go to the other one. The next highly correlated variable with cholesterol, which is diastolic. This is diastolic. Look at this. that one is pretty much the same thing, but we can talk about that. They compare the performance of the multiple regression model with the best bilinear regression model from the, the question four. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. Explain and support the difference between the model from step A and B. That's number four. It, what's the difference between the, this one and the other one? Then you can compare and contrast the R squared by looking at the R squared. Oh, that the yeah, R squared is a key part that you can look in. The, pretty much in both cases, in both of these, they have the same thing. Same kind of, a, they both would uh, kind of like a same kind of a, uh, Properties they exhibit. Let me see. Term, uh, for that one. So the height, weight, diastolic, systolic, MR, cholesterol, that one, this one. And you can see, you can see, slide the description. Whatever you see from that table. Then when it's come to the test, see, we can write like this. That's not the difference in cholesterol between the males and females. That now then you're gonna take a part there. So and run that one. Get the results. See. See, by looking at see, we're gonna go to this one equality. Variance table reveals that the afforded a statistic indicate the difference of variance and statistical significance. You're gonna mention about this P. This P. Because of that uh, 0476. Because you see, this P says that see, equal to variance table reveals that the folded statistics indicate the difference in variance is statistically significant with p-value less than 0.25. Because of that, you are this test to check the equality of variances is significant. Means like you're gonna reject H naught. That's what they say. Because of that, reject H naught means like you don't have equal variances. That means you have unequal variances. Then you use this guy to check the whether they have the same mean cholesterol for female and male to check this one. Okay. To check that one, you have a wandering, contemplating whether which can which one to be picked, pooled or set at base. That can be done by this one. First looking at this p-value, we'll check. And then by looking at that one, you can determine that equality of variances are not satisfied because they were not equal because they reject H naught. 
So they want me for this because of that. Without any hesitation, you can give the setup for T value and then make the conclusion and say male and female. Then now you can T value. As I said earlier, that almost like a 0.05 thing. You can compare with the whole thing rather than round it. 0.05 means 0.0500. 0 0.0500 being compared by 0 0.0476. So this is still small. That means you're going to reject H0 and infer that there's no difference. There is a, sorry, there's a difference in cholesterol level between males and females. Slide. That you can come to that conclusion slide. So almost 0.05. It's, uh, that means when you come to 0 0.05, still you can include it. Okay. Than or equals to less than or equals to 0 0.05 p value less than or equals to you can do that. So the same way that they did the second one, see now the diastolic per blood pressure, see between males and females, there's no difference. There is a difference. You put the code, see nicely. You put the code. You put the results, and you put the description. That's the setting over here. You're gonna write the, that. Uh, the conjecture, whatever that question that you really need to be addressed, the SAS code, the resource a little bit, whatever needed to in order to write the description of make a conclusion that you can make. And the similar fashion that uh, we run the SAS code to in order to answer this one. By looking this one, you can highlight this one. See, if you want, you can highlight this one. See. So this is the mean. The other one is standard error. Yeah. And the second one, that's the mean. That's the standard error of the mean. Yeah. So you can write. So in order to check that, exhibit that one, you run the thing, print compo correlation the way that I was talking about, put the SAS code, the results. The results you can show that very clearly. If you go to the cholesterol, this way or the other way around, the cholesterol. Go down, see, here 40, see, 40. And the other one is uh, 12, see, close to. So that means you're gonna pick diastolic and systolic. That's why we put the first one, systolic, which has a, like a highly correlation with this one, and round. And that one, see, for display the results from the red cross is using systolic data as a regressor. There was see, observation, and then see, you can talk about their equation, you can talk about t values, t values, so many things you can talk about, whatever you see over here. Look at, see, figure 4a displays the results from red procedure using systolic variable as a regressor. There were 5,209 observation rate, 5,557 observation used, and 152 missing data, see. That missing data being imputed with the zero or average. The analysis of variance table contains the statistic for the overall model, which is highly significant in this case for this one because the p value is extremely small. Significant mean, this value, is, this value and this value go together. This is the p value correspond to this f value. You know that how to find the p value correspond to this one. You're going to find the probability extreme than this value. You know the code, you can even calculate by hand, not by hand, with the code you can get this answer too, but you don't have. The mean square error is small, see, mean square error, MSC, having a value of this one relative to the mean square regression. See? However, the systolic variable only accounts for T of the variability, R square. This inference is also based on the fact that the systolic variable has a we correlation with the cholesterol variable having a coefficient only of this much, 14. In addition, the p-value of that uh, p-value of that particular case indicates that the intercept and the systolic wave parameter estimates are significant with the fitted regression model. So that means that you, in, before you're going to fit in into that model, you can simply look in into these two and say whether these two are significant or not. If they were not significant, you cannot write this equation. That's what he, we were doing. We're going to say systolic that uh, run and then intercept point, see, systolic variable parameter estimates are significant. So because of that reason, we can get the fitted one is cholesterol hat, okay? Cholesterol hat equals this value plus 
this value times sister distance. You can write some kind of description like that. Indicate everything, whatever you see, based on these one. Okay. Everything that you see from here. See regression see correlation can be see how much mean. See, this is the this is the error carried from the empty model. This is the error explained by the model. This is the error left over from the model. You can say these all are errors. Error from the empty model, error from the regression model, error that been explained by the regression model, error that been unexplained by the model. So this is too big, see? See, that's why this one, see? So much not been explained, only a little bit been explained, carried that this one a huge error. That's why look at this one. This model not good at all. There's a similar situation with the second one too. See, similar situation. Then see, based on the result between the two models using systolic and diastolic, the improvement in the regression model is relative to the correlation between the dependent and the independent systolic variable only. Only thing that you can talk about now, correlation only. They were correlated which one? Systolic is correlated, not based on the R square. R square is nothing but, I'll tell you something very clearly. This R square, if you take this R square and take the square root on this one, which is same as the correlation between those two, correlation. That's the correlation between the uh, systolic and the, uh, sorry, cholesterol and uh, systolic. That R correlation coefficient is same as this one. The square root of this one, this is the R square. But if you take the square root of this one, this is same as the correlation. Correlation, uh, whether we, I don't know whether we can see that one. You can see that when we run in this one, but it's very similar to that one, okay? So you can, the only thing that you can talk about that one is to just to simply mention about that correlation only. Then later on, the by two bivariates, that, that one you compare contrast. Later on, you go to the multiple one. See, multiple one. And for the multiple one, if you run, and then you can write the, the description for that. They say that, uh, say, Last one say that compare the explain so create a multiple regression model that uses all of the continuous variables, all the continuous variables. Then you see the R square again, not that much of improvement. See? Then you can talk about that one too. Let's go ahead and look at that one. See? See? You put everything and then you got this result. Now see, figure five, see? This way, this one, see? Blah, blah, blah. In conclusion, predict a cultural of this model when all the variables are zero is this one. For each unit rise the variable height, it and variable contribute to decrease by this one, this one, see? Whatever you see, see, those are the one that you can talk about here. And the test, look at the test. Look at the, we can talk about which one are significant. See, this is significant, 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 systolic, no. See, this one, point two two. Okay, this okay. Seems like a this one, point one more than that one, other than that, other all are explained, they're significant, less than 0.05. And on the other hand, you can talk about the 0.9 correlation coefficient. See? And then we are gonna little bit talk about this, uh, the, this one too, again, that about the, the correlation under the multipollinearity later on, okay? But for time being, you can, whatever you see, that you can mention over here. The P value, see, the figure five displays the results from the rate procedure with the cholesterol as a dependent variable having this observation. 
table contains the statistics explained the overall model explain the highly significant variation in the data which is blah 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 and are of this much included in the regression as that it will account for this much of the variation in cholesterol has been explained the primate estimate table contains the estimate and t statistics their corresponding t value by observing the result the primate estimate with their corresponding t statistics and t value are except for the systolic variable however the t value do not necessarily mean measure the importance of each regressor variable and important regressors can have a non significant t value if each regressor is measured in a narrow range and they are correlated to each other which is indicate difficulty in distinguishing individual because it's high, this systolic one highly correlated with this guy up to certain point in cholesterol systolic not the highly that 0.14 that's not even big but at least out of that all the variable this one is the highly correlated so that means the cholesterol building map the causation of the cholesterol is we cannot say because of the diastolic pressure this pressure how they are called the higher the, the value of diastolic the higher the cholesterol level we no we cannot say the causation we cannot talk about the cause we can just say they were related only even in this situation they we saw that they were not very strongly correlated because you saw that this correlation between the systolic and cholesterol or the diastolic and cholesterol they were 0.14 and 12 the rest are even not even close to that one but they were not even individually not even so highly correlated so whatever the results you can see based on this data see in comparison the multivariate regression model was able to explain this one the overall model whereas the bivariate regression from this much see? based on all the results in both model by intuition the cholesterol variable has many factors affecting it the dependent variable in the study does not really rely on one predicting variable only even if it has a high relationship with it see? they were highly related is not even highly related as i said 0.14 not highly related can you remember 0.14 is going to fall into the category with, between negative 0.33 to positive 0.33 within that range it's definitely there's no correlation actually there's no correlation because it's 0.14 we saw that when we run that 1.14 we cannot remember correlation coefficient uh, print com see get this one run one more time And the cholesterol, cholesterol with this one, see, point one four, see this one and this one. But according to our, can you remember? According to the correlation, the the ranges that I gave in one time. Okay, I show you real quick, and then we can stop. Okay. This one, this one, uh, hundred. Then twenty twenty. This one. See this range. Can you remember this range? Between point thirty three to this one, the variables are not correlated. See negative point thirty three to past point thirty three. See in this range, there's nothing. Thirty three. You have point fourteen. Fourteen is here. That means there's no correlation at all. this uh, data data not that much explain very well explain that the cholesterol this data are not plain we see you see very weakly correlated extremely weakly correlated but there are see diastolic and systolic they were highly correlated see i'm talking about the cholesterol not being explained by any of these very well very and then even when we run the multiple regression you saw if the sing bivariate Very uh, that regression you saw that what happened by in everything it's no good but anyhow whatever you see you can explain and out of all these at least multiple regression means uh, rather than explaining cholesterol with the systolic or diastolic better off explained by that uh, more variables but still it's not uh, that. Uh, 
highly that uh, the, the, our error not being highly explained by the model. It's not a good model. We can think about a different kind of a model. Yeah. So this model doesn't work. And then we, in that way, sometimes we're going to square some variables, get the inverses of some variables, and then check and see. And the log, put the log and see how it's going to work. And then in order to do that one beforehand, that if you're going to do any kind of a better fitting any model to this data, you can look into their scatter plot and get a rough idea what to be done. Mainly we were in the under that uh, nonlinear regression or the curvilinear regression. We talked about three regression. One is the polynomial regression. The other one is inverse regression. The other one log regression. I think we had that through the discussion. That's all. Whatever you, this is not a good data set. Oh, that uh, the, the question they set up, not for that one. But the cholesterol that systolic and diastolic, they were highly correlated, but how they explain each other, we don't know that we can go to that, looking into that uh, multipollinearity the next week. But that part, we continue the same discussion. Okay. That's all I'm planning to do today. And uh, do you have any question, anything that you want to discuss before I'm going to wind up? Anything? Good, good. Yeah. So, so if you if we need any help on that, uh, the homework and this one, any further homework, anything, just email me. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and wind up over here. You have a good night and have a nice weekend and then uh, enjoy your weekend and see you guys. Uh, next week next monday okay with a new chapter okay take care have a good night thank you bye bye very good thank you very much have a good night